American History TV is at the annual meeting of the Organization of American Historians at, um, in Milwaukee. And joining us is the National Park Service historian, the chief historian, Robert Sutton. Thanks for being here. Thanks. What, thank you for inviting me. What brings you to this meeting, other than it's a gathering of, uh, of historians? Well, it's a gathering of historians, but we, have, um, we do a lot of work with the Organization of American Historians. Um, we have a cooperative agreement, so uh, a number of historians within the organization do studies for us, help us uh, with our interpretation of parks, and so we've had a, a fairly long and very, very beneficial uh, partnership with the Organization of American Historians. And you're participating on a, a couple of discussions here. I am. Uh, on Native Americans and also on the Civil War. What was the focus of the, the first one on Native well, Americans? Well, uh, we... we it's very interesting. We have a number of parks that deal with Native American history. And we have a number of parks that the main focus is not Native American history, but there are amazing um, stories. So, for example, Pea Ridge Battlefield is a Civil War battlefield. Um, it was established as a Civil War battlefield. And, you know, for years and years and years, we've told the story of the battle that took place there. Um, there that, about, is, that is in what state, Pea Ridge? That is in North. West Arkansas, sort of in the corner between Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. And for years and years, we've told the story of uh, the battle that took place there. It was a Union victory. It was critical for trying to keep uh, Missouri in the Union. And in typical Park Service fashion, we did a lot of telling who shot who, where, when, how, so forth. But there are a lot of other interesting stories there as well. Um, there were about 26,000 combatants, uh, about 16,000 on the Confederate side, about 10,000 on the Union side, and the Union won the battle, which was unusual at that time. Usually when they were outnumbered, they didn't win. But anyway, that's the military story. The other story is that there were about 1,000 Cherokee Indians fighting for the Confederacy. Mm. And uh, many of the Cherokee leaders, commanders, um, actually were slaveholders. And so, they had a lot more in common, uh, many of them had a lot more in common with the Confederacy, and it's fairly more complicated than that, but had a lot more in common with the Confederacy uh, than they did with the Union. And so that's a story that we hadn't told before, but now we're telling, and we've, had, we've consulted with the Cherokee Nation in developing that story. The other story was that about half of the Union soldiers were German. And so, Actual you know, those- Ger German immigrants. Mm -hmm. yeah. German immigrants. But there's another story that has nothing to do with the battle, really at all, which is that the, the Trail of Ter Tears on which the Cherokees uh, were escorted from their homeland in the east to Indian Territory in Oklahoma, the Trail of Tears literally goes through the middle of the park. And so now the park tells the story of the Trail of Tears as well. And I think what's very um, beneficial uh, with, the, with the interpretation is they tell these stories but they also say, you know, if you want to learn more about the Cherokees, the, the headquarters, the, the capital, essentially capital of the Cherokee Nation is Tahlequah, which is not far away, and we would suggest you go there for a visit as well. How many parks do you oversee in terms of um, looking at the history in those parks? Well, um, I don't really oversee all the parks. What I do is hope is provide guidance, and I try to parks that, that have similar themes, I try to get them working together so they can share resources and information. Um, about two-thirds of parks, about two-thirds of all national parks are historic or cultural. And so um, I have obviously more interest in those parks, but many of the parks that are not primarily cultural have a lot of very important and interesting historical stories as well. And the National Park Service began when? The National Park Service was founded in 1916, but the first national park was Yellowstone, which was established in 1872. So there were a number of national parks before there was a national park service. When did the when did we start to to establish a position of a historian for the park? There actually was a chief historian uh, in the early 1930s, I believe 1931, uh, and so that's been that's one of the actually one of the oldest um, positions, um, manage, you know, upper level management positions in the park service. What sort of um, issues do you have with, you talked about the changing story at Pea Ridge, and I, and I assume that other places have these sorts of things, but what sorts of issues do you have in doing research in an area, in a park or whatever, that's actually being used by visitors, by tourists, um, and yet you're, you're involved there perhaps 
on a historical nature, whether that's an archaeological dig mm -hmm. or doing further research. Well, one of the things that we've done um, before this position, I was the chief historian at, or excuse me, I was a superintendent at Manassas Battlefield, uh, which of course is a Civil War battlefield. And one of the things that we started doing uh, when I was there, and I've continued since I've been here, is trying to expand the story of the Civil War beyond, again, who shot who, where, and when. So Pea Ridge is one example. I mean, the story of uh, the Cherokees, the Germans, the Trail of Tears, that wasn't really part of the, that wasn't the reason that Congress established that park, but it's an, it's right. an important story that we tell, and I think it, it's much more enriching to the visitors. <clears throat> and other Civil War battlefields, generally across the, you know, across the Park Service, um, we have been expanding our interpretation um, to talk about what caused the war, um, which sometimes isn't a, a very popular issue. Um, slavery, slavery very clearly was the cause of the Civil War. Um, we have been saying that through our, through our interpretation, through our films, through our exhibits. If parks have built new exhibits, most of them have included that story. Um, and in our interpretive programs, we talk about the origins of the war, the impact on families. Um, 600, that's the number that we've used and actually was established shortly after the Civil War was that there were 620,000 that were killed in the Civil War. Um, there's some recent research that suggests that number was probably higher and some say even as high as 850,000. So imagine what it was like for the families of these either 620,000 or 850,000 who didn't return home. Then there were a number, many more than that, who returned home without missing limbs, um, post-traumatic shock that they didn't even understand at the time. And so the impact on the country was, was, was tremendous beyond you know, the impact of the Civil War itself. It was, it was tremendous impact on families. Well, starting the last year and over the next couple of years on American History TV, we are looking at the 150th anniversary of, of, right. of the Civil War. You talked about some of the things that you're doing in, in your parks. What else specifically for the uh, 150th should people be on the lookout for? Well, uh, we just, one of our parks, Homestead uh, Park in uh, Homestead, Homestead National Memorial in Nebraska, um, that commemorates the very first homestead that was established under the Homestead Act. Um, the, the, uh, this gentleman uh, filed his claim one minute after midnight on January 1st, 1863. How big would his claim have been? How many acres? 160 acres. Um, so that part commemorates the Homestead Act, which was one of the really important uh, pieces of legislation during the Civil War. And there was a conference a couple weeks ago in, in Nebraska on the Homestead Act the Morrill Act, which established the land-grant colleges and Civic Railroad Act. Um, and so there were a lot of domestic, very tr terribly important domestic pieces of legislation that hadn't been able to, hadn't been passed. That got passed during the Civil during War? During the Civil War, right. Um, just this past week, um, April 16th, was the 150th anniversary of the emancipation of slaves in the District of Columbia. So there are a number of things um, that we're commemorating in addition to commemorating significant battles of the Civil War. How long have you been a historian with the uh, Park Service? I have been a historian uh, for, I've been in the Park Service for about 29 years. Um, part of that time I was in administration as a superintendent, which meant that sometimes I was a historian and sometimes I was not a historian, but I have been a historian, or I've been in the Park Service, and, and mostly doing history. You talked about the changing nature of stories, revisiting stories at places. How have how has the way that visitors interact with exhibits, what are, what's different about the way visitors look at exhibits now? What, did they, what are they more interested in now? Do you, does it necessitate, does it mean that you have to have video displays and all of those things? Well, part of the problem with our exhibits, many of, ex of our exhibits, especially in Civil War battlefields, are many, many years old. A lot of them were, were erected in the 1950s and 1960s, and so they're very out of date. Um, the, the, uh, National Park Service exhibits are a little bit different from museum exhibits in that the purpose of our exhibits should be, and hopefully are, to orient people to the historic site. So what we really want them to do, instead of spending a lot of time looking at the exhibits, we want them to understand the significance of the site and then go out and look at the site. So unlike a museum, which is a destination, you go to the museum to look at the museum exhibits, 
most of our, not all, but most of our um, exhibits are for the purpose of orienting people to the site so that they understand it when they what's the, go um, for the visit. What's the, the traffic like? <coughs> how, how is visitation in the, in the national parks? Um, the visitation is, it, it, the last few years has been around 170, 108, excuse me, 270, 280 million a year. And in someone, all national parks. All services. national parks. Mm -hmm. And um, someone asked me about that a couple of weeks ago, and I, I looked at, I decided if that were a country, <laughs> it'd be the fourth largest country. That if, if that was a population of a country, so we still have a tremendous uh, amount of visitation. It varies, you know, some years a little lower, some years a little higher, but it's it's around that. I'll wrap up by asking you um, the report that you, in conjunction with the Organization of American Historians, the mm -hmm. National Park Service, which was presented at the conference here in front of a sizable crowd, mm -hmm. what, what's that report about? Well, what we commissioned the uh, Organization of American Historians to do a survey of historians within the Park Service. and. Um, we have a, a, in the government, there's a classification for different positions, and so the classification for historian is GS-170. I'm sure everybody's thrilled to know that. <laughs> but we also have a number of, of employees in the Park Service who are trained as historians who are in different positions. So we tried to identify as many as we could of, of all of the um, uh, historians in the Park Service, whether in the classification or not. And um, so we, so we did the survey of, of about 1,500 in the Park Service. We got a, about 500 responses. So about, about 30, 35% 30, responses. And what we were looking at is, you know, how, what are we doing? How are we doing? Are we doing a good job of, of managing history and historical sites? Are we not doing a good job? Are we doing some things well, some things not so well? And pr from my perspective, what we're looking for are what things can we do to improve both the profession of history in the Park Service, and not necessarily by replacing anybody, but providing the tools to do a better job. What are we doing to, to how can we, how can we tell, the, you know, bring, tell stories that are, that are um, important to the visitors, are accurate, and reflect the most recent research in history. Um, and also we're looking at, you know, what, what can we do um, to make the Park Service better? And we think we can do a lot of things through the, through with this report. Robert Sutton is the historian with the National Park Service. Thanks for joining Thank us you. here on American History TV. Appreciate it.